While humankind often presumes priority of place, planet Earth might more accurately be described as the domain of arthropods. And from tidelines to mountaintops, it is often the insects that define life on Earth. Among naturalists, however, butterflies and dragonflies get most of the attention, while other orders are ignored. Certainly the Hymenoptera, the bees, wasps, and ants, are often overlooked. Each of these groups, however, has its champions, and one man, Howard Ensign Evans, is primarily responsible for calling our attention to the wasps. In his book Wasp Farm, Evans highlights the joys of wasp watching in his descriptions of the extraordinary and fascinating behavior of common wasp species. In chapter 1, Evans states, Wasps share our planet, but live in a different world. All about us they wind out their little lives, unaware that man is lord and master of the earth. We would do well now and then, Evans suggests, to stretch out on the good earth with a notebook, camera, or sketch pad and chronicle the lives of some of our less self-important neighbors. Solitary wasps and other members of the order Hymenoptera share various characteristics, including the presence of mandibles used for chewing, biting, or holding prey, as well as a tongue-like structure for gathering liquids, often nectar from blossoms. But here, ants collect honeydew from aphids. Female hymenopterans are also capable of determining the sex of their offspring by either fertilizing or not fertilizing their eggs. Eggs with sperm produce females, such as these non-reproductive worker bees. Unfertilized eggs produce males. Order Hymenoptera comprises two major subdivisions. The Symphyta, the more primitive group, includes the sawflies. Horntails and wood wasps are also in this group. Adult Symphyta lack the thread-waisted appearance, typical of many wasps, and often display a prominent ovipositor. The Apocrita is the second, and by far the more diverse, suborder. The Apocrita is also divided into two groups. The Parasitica is comprised of the Ichneumonoidea and the Chalcid wasps. Ichneumonoid wasps are extremely diverse and make up the largest family of Hymenopterans. While some species of Parasitica show behavioral similarities to wasps in the Aculeate group, the term solitary wasp is traditionally restricted to members of the latter group. We have now pared down the order to the Aculeate Hymenopterans, the taxonomic home of solitary wasps. We still, however, face a mind-boggling assemblage of diversity. We can further narrow our focus by considering the three Aculeate subdivisions. Each subgroup includes solitary wasps. The Chrysodoides are a small group and include parasitoid wasps whose metallic coloration makes them readily apparent, especially around flowering plants. The Vespoids include spider and mason wasps. Here also we find the insects most folks think of when they hear the word wasp. The yellow jackets that visit our picnics and the hornets, whose bulky nests are a feature of the landscape. The extraordinary diversity of this superfamily is best exemplified, however, by another of its subgroups, the ants. Few organisms have solved the riddle of survival better than the ants. As with most insects, the mother load of diversity is found in the tropics. Finally, the apoid hymenopterans include most of the typical solitary wasps. 
Once again, however, the diversity of this group is largely attributable not to the wasps, but to another subgroup, the bees. Bees are not only a varied lot, but include many plant pollinators critical to our species' well-being. As with all organisms, however, the bees exist not to serve us, but to care for their own self-interests. Many are social, but others lead solitary lives. We may now turn our attention to solitary wasps. While our brief glimpse of the other hymenopterans may serve to provide a context for the aculeate wasps, the naturalist finds delight not in the taxonomy, but in the individual critters themselves. There are a number of characteristics shared by all solitary wasps. The structure and function of what was originally a combined ovipositor stinger gives us evidence of their shared heritage. In these insects, the ancestral egg-laying function of this organ is no longer present. The organ now serves solely as a means to inject venom. While humans are at times on the receiving end of this piece of evolutionary history, solitary wasps largely employ this ability to anesthetize prey. Solitary wasps are active predators and most species have a characteristic hunting strategy and a well-defined choice of prey. These wasps are also nest builders, with many excavating underground burrows for use as nurseries. Which brings us to another important point. Solitary wasps go through complete metamorphosis, and many live underground before emerging as adults. The adult stage, though brief, is by far the most interesting. Solitary wasps offer the naturalist the opportunity to follow an individual wasp through nearly all of its adult life. Finally, those of us who choose to do some wasp watching will be observing the females most of the time. Although the male's role is critical, the female bears the burden of providing offspring with the material resources and protection they require during development. There are two characteristics of solitary wasps worth considering as you begin your own quest. Adult wasps often visit flowering plants for nectar, and it is here that they are most readily observed. But it is at the nest site, often in sandy areas, where the biggest rewards of wasp watching occur. In closing, I can offer no better advice than Evan's suggestion that we would do well to stretch out on the good earth and chronicle the lives of these amazing insects.